Hi, this is Alan Pierce, going to be reporting today on the XYZ printing line of printers, 3D printers, that are go under the name of Da Vinci. Um, and we're looking specifically at the Da Vinci 1.0, Da Vinci 2.0, and the Da Vinci 1.0 AIO. And the machines, all of those machines, are based on the same structure that you see behind me. Physically, they are all the same size. Uh, the uh, way they're designed is exactly the same. And um, one of the questions that comes to my mind, the first time I saw one of these printers, is how good are they? It's a name I never heard of. During CES 2015, uh, at a pre presentation there, Joris Peel uh, warned participants the fact that many of the companies, and there were a fantastic number of companies there uh, with 3D printers, it was a whole area in, on the show floor, something quite different than the year before, that many of them are underfunded and the machines that they're building will not be around a year from now. Uh, and um, that made me wonder, very specifically, you know, this company XYZ Printing, you know, is it underfunded? How is it able to sell machines at a half to one third the price of the other manufacturers? Now, their representative told me their goal is to get a printer sitting on the homes of most people within a couple of years. Um, it's a major goal. And to make the printer simple enough to use that you don't need to take a huge course to be able to understand how to work it. But in any case, I decided to look into the company first to see specifically, are they going to be around in a year or two? What I learned is that they're a subsidiary of the new Kimpo Group. And NKG is the world's largest manufacturer of printers, wireless routers, hard disk drives, and TV set-top boxes. They are an OEM manufacturer, which means that they produce lots and lots of products under other companies' names, and they have built things for Sony, Microsoft, Nikon, HP, Epson, Radio Shack, Sharp, Casio, Canon, and probably many other brands that you're quite familiar with. So the company is kind of strong. They have 25,000 workers uh, throughout Asia and other countries uh, building products and you know uh, in the shops that you've seen where so many of the American products are being built today by uh, inexpensive labor and uh, they have like 1200 engineers specifically tasked to find and develop new products for market and so what they've done here is they've decided to cut out the middleman instead of producing a line of 3D printers under someone else's name, they decided to produce it under their own name. And uh, these machines uh, are the first of them. Uh, at CES 2015, they won an award for a machine I will not be covering, and that one uses lasers. Now, if you think about printing, this kind of printing, okay, this fused filament kind of printing, uh, goes and to back to or follows the exact design of an inkjet printer. The next line up in printing for the home was laser printers. Their newest printer that won an award actually uses lasers uh, to actually produce the objects and they're not the only one uh, starting to produce the next line of printers. And what's the difference? Quality, the same as you had here uh, when you went to inkjet from dot matrix, it was better quality. There's never been a dot matrix 3D printer. I'm not saying that, but it's the same kind of idea. What we have in the machine is the Titan God Prometheus, and he's the largest figure that I've made inside this printer. And uh, he actually, the SLA design for him came from myminifactory.com, and they have... Um, hundreds of actual designs that you can download and they're working on a program to actually uh, how have, have you help um, create new designs of figures from statues from different museums they ask you to take loads of pictures 
uh, all different angles from it, and you can find that on their website, you know, specifically. Send it to them, and then they will turn it into a, uh, a 3D printable design and uh, let people download it for free. The Da Vinci line of machines, the one that you see here, represents the 1.0, the 2.0, 1.0AIO, are all fully enclosed machines, uh, which is good for a safety point of view. The door to these machines, however, is not lockable. It just swings closed. So that is one thing to realize if you're using the machine with young children. Over here you see the three machines uh, and uh, set up at CES 2015 uh, and we're going to look at all three and see what their difference is. The basic construction is the same and here they all have basically the same display that you can control and set the different settings of what you want to do on the machine uh, and it will tell you how long you have to be for complete the building of your actual project. what percentage is done. Uh, over here we're looking at the AIO and you can see that's where you would actually do the scanning at the bottom of the machine. The plate that the bust is standing on is actually a uh, Lazy Susan that is motorized and as it spins it actually will cause the uh, object uh, with a laser will actually reproduce the object into a digital file that can be used to uh, be saved and printed. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the uh, the number two, 2.0, and you'll notice it has two fuses up on top. That's the important thing that I wanted you to see. Internally, they're almost the same, except the two fuses, and then it also has two boxes for catching plastic. So everything is in a sense the same, but there's a duplication so that the machine can work with the two different fuses to print in two different colors. As we go inside this machine, basically a lot of the things uh, are going to be exactly the same. And so we're going to really just use one machine, kind of see them all. Uh, in front of you is the actual cartridge. And, and that cartridge holds uh, 600 grams of the material, which is 1.3 pounds. And it's a proprietary pack uh, cartridge. And that's one of the things that I don't like about the machine. I would rather it was actually running from a roll. Uh, the machine will not let you start a, a project if there's not enough filament for you to actually complete it, which is a good point. Uh, they do not have a recycling program for cartridges at this moment, but I'm sure they're going to have that soon or someone's going to set it up and set up a refilling kind of thing. At the bottom of the cartridge, you will find an actual little chip, which you can see there, and that chip is actually being read by the machine and it's being informed by the cartridge what's left in the cartridge which means you just can't open the cartridge up and refill it though uh, on the internet you can find ways of uh, resetting the chip uh, getting rid of the cartridge completely getting rid of the software there are many many people who are hobbyists who have decided they love the machine and they hate the cartridge and they hate the software, the build software that came with it. And so that what they've done is they've worked up all kinds of hacks, which they'll introduce you to, to make changes in the machine so that uh, it is more to their liking and more to the real true hobbyist kind of liking where they want to have more control of what the machine can actually do. Let's get the cartridge out of the way. What we have is we have our build platform, okay, the top is glass, there's a heating element underneath it, and uh, it's got a 7.8 inch um, cube, so in other words, you can do width, height, and depth as far as the physical size of what you're actually building. Um, the uh, one thing about it, when I showed you Prometheus, uh, the god of fire, uh, that big bottom baking on it actually broke the glass, and I found that the glass actually has the heating element printed right on it and that's one of the things I don't like about it because that makes it kind of expensive to actually replace. You can't just slap a new piece of glass. 
These machines are known as a fused filament fabrication machine. They're squishing out hot plastic from the extruder, and that plastic is then sitting on the plate over here. The plate moves down a hair, and the next layer is placed on top. The computer controls the whole operation. If we look over here, uh, we see the X, Y, and Z configuration. And what we have is we have two sets of rails um, across the top, and that's where it's actually going to physically move for the X movement, for the Y movement, and, and the Z movement is actually the table itself. So the table would be up on top, and, and that would actually give that. If we come right in here and bring this back, there is a little piece and it's now hitting it. And what that does is that will clean off any extra plastic. It goes both ways. Uh, that might be dripping out before it starts to actually build, build the project. The outside dimensions of these three machines are, are all basically the same. 18.4 18 by, 18 by 20 inches by 22 inches. That's height, width, and, and depth. Okay, And they all weigh approximately the same amount of weight, uh, which is somewhere around 52 pounds. Um, you'll notice that many of the components of um, the, the actual carriage itself are actually made out of plastic. That would have certainly kept costs down. And it is a very, very clean build. That's one of the things about it. It's a very, very clean setup, very, very roomy, um, you know, as far as the actual construction. The working temperature of the extruder is 210 degrees centigrade. That's 410 degrees Fahrenheit. The platform, the working temperature is around 90 degrees centigrade, which is 192 degrees Fahrenheit, thereabouts. Uh, I found with construction in, in this particular machine, there was no need to actually use glue with that hot plate the uh, objects had no problem sticking to the clean glass. In, in fact, again, that Prometheus was big enough, sat there long enough that it actually broke the glass, and that's where I learned that the heating element is actually printed directly onto the glass. They have the same LCD screen that you see over on top over there. And from that, uh, you can click and decide what you want to actually to do, and uh, we'll see what the different screens actually look like. Uh, under the first one, we have the you know the ones you see over there: change card, home access, uh, calibrate, build the sample. And if we go back under settings, we have uh, also a set. And you're using the controls that uh, you see, the buttons that you see on on the, on the right. And the home screen will take you back to the very, very beginning. So you're seeing what is actually under different things are now in settings. And um, before we saw utilities. And now let's take a look and see what's under information. If you click on any one of these items, it'll give you the specifics of, of, of what's going on in it whether you're building a sample or whatever. And, and here we can see the machine is completely cold. Change the actual cart, the, the, the cartridge. What you do is go to change cart that you see over there and select it. And then turn around and follow its directions, and I'm going to show you how that's done right now. The new cartridge is now in place, and this little clip here that holds it and gets pressed down by the cover uh, is in place. If you don't put that in place, what does happen is you stand a very good chance of of having that dislodge and then uh, it, if it loses contact, electrical contact, there's a chip inside the box uh, and then, then you're going to find you have printer problems. And then placing it down Okay, and the filament is tracking right here in my finger 
down to where the extruder is. And uh, I have pressed load filament, the same position to procedure as the unload.